What's up everybody? Couch Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Overwatch video. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the crazy buffs and nerfs to every single role. Tank, DPS, and support. Supports, huge buffs. DPS, huge nerfs. Tanks got changed in a ton of different ways, so we gotta break it all down and talk about it. But the Game League website is the best place to pop off and dominate with in-depth tips and tricks made by Grandmaster Plus players. So do yourself a favor and go check it out right now down below. Now while the Overwatch 2 beta has been fun, there have definitely been some huge problems, especially around the imbalance between the roles, and with this freaking patch, it looks like a lot of that is changing. So let's start it off with the damage roll. For Sojourn, they said this, quote, we saw a lot of players at varying skill levels struggling to land shots with their alternate fire, so we're making the projectile width wider. Sojourn is all about mobility and we wanted her to move around the map more freely. We think this will help increase her effectiveness and make her even more fun to play. Railgun alternate fire projectile width is increased from 0.05 to 0.1. So it's going to be double the width now, which is definitely going to make hitting those railgun shots a lot easier. And also the power slide cooldown got reduced from 7 to 6 seconds. Now, while I did think that Sojourn was pretty good, I do think that this makes her a lot better and more appealing to pick as opposed to her counterparts, specifically Soldier, who got a huge nerf that we're going to talk about next. Quote, we believe Soldier 76 was overtuned during the first week of the PvP beta. He was extremely mobile with the new damage passive that increases movement speed by 10%. We brought his sprint ability down a bit with the new passive in mind. In addition, Soldier has always been a high damage output hero, and now there are fewer counters to him with one less tank per team. So they are lowering the damage of his heavy pulse rifle to fit 5v5. They also want to make Tactical Visor a more interesting ultimate for players who want to push their aim skill through the ability. The point of this change isn't purely to buff him or counterbalance the nerfs. We wanted to make Soldier 76 more fun to play while rewarding mechanical skill. So first is the Pulse Rifle, the primary fire damage reduced from 20 to 18, Sprint Movement reduced from 50 to 40%, and Tactical Visor now allows for critical hits if a shot would have been a critical hit without it running. No longer removes damage fall off for his Heavy Pulse Rifle. Now, this is really, really interesting. The direction they took this character and the overall design philosophy here is amazing. So first off, with the changes to the Pulse Rifle and the Sprint, in my opinion, these are fine changes. With the speed increase, like they said, and the fact that he has kind of been activated in 5v5, Soldier was way too strong, far and away the best DPS character. And even with these changes, I think he's still really, really good. But the tactical visor is interesting because now you can critical hit. If you activate it, you are going to be able to critical hit if you are tracking an enemy. So not only will that just actually upgrade the overall damage of attack visor because at its minimum, you're going to be doing the same damage as you would before, but you could actually potentially burst down people even faster, kill more people with your attack visor. And the fact is they are adding in a higher amount of mechanical skill to the ultimate that before required none. And I love that design philosophy. I would love that Overwatch 2 feels like a game that rewards mechanical skill far more than many, many metas in Overwatch 1. And I think this is a really great step in the right direction, personally. Next up, they have a nerf to Sombra. After a week of testing the new damage passive, we decided to balance Sombra's stealth speed with the 10% movement speed increase in mind. So now the movement speed is reduced from 65 to 50%. So she's not quite as fast in stealth. That's probably a fine change. I do think that Sombra is pretty strong, and I don't know if this is enough, but with buffs to the other roles in addition to this, it might be more in balance. Now, next up, we got to talk about the tanking role that saw a ton of changes. Four tanks were changed here. First off, Roadhog. Well, we saw Roadhog underperforming, so we're making his ultimate more interesting, effective, and fun. Roadhog was dying frequently while using Whole Hog, so we are trying to give him more options and flexibility in his ult. Whole Hog. This ability has changed from Channeled Ultimate, e.g. Farah, Reaper, Cassidy, into a Transform Ultimate, Soldier, Genji, Winston. This is what that means. The weapon no longer automatically fires. You press the primary fire to use the ultimate. You can use normal abilities during a whole hog without canceling the ultimate. Stuns will no longer cancel the ultimate. Holy fuck. Okay, that is actually crazy. And... 
For context, Roadhog has been one of the worst tanks going into Overwatch 2. While you would think that he would be really good, it's really awkward when you are the only tank. It's really hard to flank when you're your only front line. You can't do front line and flank stuff at the same time. Plus, there's no shield blocking you, so you're just gonna get freaking shot like crazy. You're gonna get naded and slept like crazy. And Roadhog has been struggling. But this change to Whole Hog is amazing. I, for one, really like it because now you're way less vulnerable. You pop it and an enemy can't just walk up to you and just go all in on you because you could still hook them. And even if you get CC'd, if the activation length is still live, you can like still use it after the fact. So it makes Whole Hog far less of an all or nothing ability, more something that you can utilize, but you actually have a lot more decisions while you're using it and I think that this is another step in the right direction further increasing that mechanical skill gap and giving Roadhog like they said a really more interesting effective and fun buff to the ultimate this is actually really cool guys next up is Winston quote the change to Winston's secondary fire enables him to use it more often without sacrificing as much of his primary fire we want his secondary fire to feel less restrictive to use and more fluid like his kit so secondary fire ammo cost reduced from 20 to 12 and I think this is probably good Winston definitely needed a buff and I'm not even sure if this is enough but any sort of buff to Winston is definitely one that a lot of people are going to appreciate next up is Wrecking Ball quote we're reverting rolls knock back to the original value from when Wrecking Ball was launched we want to give Wrecking Ball a more unique role as a dive tank that can split up enemies we made this change with the tank passive a 30% knockback resistance in mind. So the knockback is now increased by 36%. And this means that you're going to be able to boop tanks a lot more, but of course not as much as DPS and supports, which you're going to basically send fucking flying. And uh, this is really good for Wrecking Ball, another character that has kind of taken a backseat to Doomfist. And I do think that this buff in particular is going to allow him to really be disruptive and allow really great Wrecking Ball mains to cause a lot of havoc and heavily displace an enemy, pushing them into their team or way out away from their team. So I think this is probably going to be a good change overall, especially for Wrecking Ball mains. Last up in the tanking category is Zarya. Quote, there are less counters to Graviton Surge with one less tank per team and phase effects no longer escaping Zarya's ultimate. We observe the ultimate overperforming, so this change brings it in line with 5v5 gameplay. The Graviton Surge duration is reduced from 4 seconds to 3.5 seconds. Honestly, I think this is fine. I don't really think that Zarya needed a nerf, but it does make sense, especially with how much they buff the Graviton Surge, like they said, where a lot of characters cannot escape. You're more than likely to kill everyone in a Graviton Surge anyways, even though it only lasts for 3.5 seconds, but it could mean one less right-click melee combo added to the Graviton Surge, so it might be a little bit more difficult for you to finish off some targets if you're like Graviton surging, just you high charge against like two enemies, for instance. Now, last but certainly not least, we get to the support role and they nerfed all the support. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> they changed a lot of supports. We're going to start off with Lucio. Quote, Lucio had incredible survivability with crossfade stacked with the new support role passive. So we reduced the amount it heals himself. Crossfade self-healing penalty increased from 30% to 60%. And... Some of you are going to freak out about this, but Lucio was far and away like one of the best characters in Overwatch 2. Because he was very elusive and hard to hit, he could heal himself and he automatically got heal if he didn't take damage for a single second. Good Lucios that were great at wall running could just like never freaking die. I mean, just look at DSP Stanky. Imagine that motherfucker flying at you when he has a self heal too. So think about it that way and this puts it more in line. He's still a phenomenal character. But I do think that the penalty for crossfade needed to be increased. I think this is a good nerf to Lucio, even if it's not a gigantic nerf. Next up is Baptiste. Baptiste is underperforming because teams aren't playing as grouped up right now. Increasing his healing ammo will let him heal more targets who aren't necessarily grouped up. Biotic launcher alt fire. Healing ammo increased from 10 to 13. I think this is a good change to Baptiste. I do think he probably needs more. He is very, very weak right now. He doesn't really fit a solo tank 5v5 in my personal opinion. And I would more like reworks for the character for the future. But for now, I mean, it's fine. Any buff to Baptiste is a good thing. 
Next up, we gotta talk about Ana. Quote, Ana's biotic grenade was too effective with one less tank and more infrequent barriers, so we are reducing the duration of the ability. We also saw Ana using her grenade less frequently on herself because the new support passive ability. To help compensate for her grenade, we wanted to give her power back through increasing her biotics rifle ammo. So the ammo of the biotic rifle is now 15 from 12, but the biotic grenade duration only lasts 3 seconds instead of 4. It's unfortunate, this is ultimately going to be probably a slight nerf to Ana, but you're going to be able to fire a lot more, be a little bit more aggressive with your rifle, and your nades aren't actually going to, you know, be as effective for as long. But because there's so much less blocking your grenades in the first place, I still think that Ana is in a really good place in Overwatch 2. Now, next up is Zenyatta, and they said, quote, Zenyatta had trouble fighting at close range, so he was at a disadvantage if an enemy flanked or jumped on top of him. His new passive, Snap Kick, will help him create space and put enemies at his fighting range. We think this new passive will be a fun adjustment to his kit, but we also want this change to acknowledge community concerns. We understand 5v5 has made support heroes feel more vulnerable, and we wanted to give Zenyatta tools to help create space between him and his enemies. So base shields increased from 150 to 175. Snap Kick, new passive ability, increases quick melee damage by 50% and significantly increases knockback. Uh, what in the actual hell? That is so cool. Like, I'm just saying that's so, I love Zenyatta. Zenyatta is one of the two supports that I really play on in Zenyatta, and I love him so much. But being able to just kick the hell out of people, like you're literally kicking them, doing a giant chunk of damage, and knocking them back that is actually crazy in addition to more survivability this means his melee is gonna knock enemies back slightly and it's gonna do 45 damage instead of 30 damage which is going to definitely change a whole bunch of breakpoints i mean the potential here is crazy and i love it i think it's really cool and uh yeah it makes sense to give like the most fragile character which i call zenyatta a glass cannon character a way to actually turn the tables on his attackers if they get too close and even combo people with like shooting them once in the head with the discord and uh kicking them and just fucking winning the fight i mean it's just really really cool i like it a lot now last up we're going to talk about brig so quote it's difficult to tell when brig lands a shield bash because of the impact of that ability was not easily noticeable this is a subtle change that will make the ability feel more satisfying so with the shield bash the knockback is doubled so they're giving Brig more CC here. It's going to actually push enemies back further and really push them away from you. And uh, I think this makes her a better peeler. And I think this is probably a buff that a lot of supports are really going to like because it allows you to, you know, get some of those pesky divers off you. And, uh, you know, characters like Doom, Wrecking Ball, Tracer, whatever. So, yeah. All in all, like, 99% of this, I really love. I think this is a really big step in the right direction. I am not entirely sure if they did enough to keep things balanced for supports. There might need to be slightly more nerfs to some of the other DPS characters, but for now, this is a really good start. I'm really excited, and I think this is really good for Overwatch 2. Come on, just a couple more characters, one more support character, and ranked mode, and we're fucking we're golden. We're golden. But definitely let me know what you think about this patch down below. And please smash the like, subscribe, so you don't miss out on any of our Overwatch news and guides. Thank you so much. See you later.